What's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna be ranking programming languages based on this tier list that I'm sure most of you have seen. I'm ranking languages based on my personal experience with them. Most of the languages on this list are good at what they're designed for. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't be on this list. Programming languages are kind of like natural selection. If a language isn't good, it'll eventually die out, except JavaScript. So we're going to start with Java, which has nothing to do with JavaScript. But we have to talk about Java because it's the language I talk about most on this channel. It's what I use for most of my code examples and still one of the most popular programming languages in the world. It's efficient. It's intuitive. There are knocks on the language like it has a verbose syntax, but Oracle, the owners of Java, have definitely done a good job of addressing this and making improvements in newer versions of Java. I can't put it in the S tier or even the A tier because of those knocks. And I feel like in this day and age with all the new languages that have gotten popular over the past decade, I can't recommend Java as the number one language to learn. So I'm gonna have to put this in the B tier. Next up, we have Python. I mean, what can I say? If you're watching this, you already know about Python. Outside of JavaScript, probably the most popular language in the world. Whenever someone asks me what language they should learn first, Unless they're specifically wanting to do like front end or UI UX, I tell them to learn Python. It's intuitive, it's a powerful language. You can do a lot with a little bit of code and it's one of the easiest languages for people to pick up. There's a library for pretty much anything you wanna do. If this was solely an objective list, Python would be S tier, but this is my list. And I've never been a fan of the spacing of the language. I've always hated having to use like colons and the exact number of tabs in order for the program to run. I don't know, maybe I'm old school and I prefer the use of curly braces, but for that reason, I gotta knock it down from S to A. Next up we have C, probably the oldest language on this list and it's really stood the test of time. And it's, it's such an efficient language. It does exactly what you need it to do, exactly what you want it to do. Almost all operating systems are written in solely or mostly in C. Programs that the command line executes like LS and CD are written in C. And most of the languages on this list are derived or were strongly influenced by C. Uh, it's very close to the hardware. Uh, it's often referred to as a mid-level language because it has less abstraction as a high-level language like Python or Java, but not quite as close to the hardware as like assembly. It doesn't do anything fancy like object-oriented programming, but it gives programmers full control over their program. Of course, that makes it potentially dangerous with things like segmentation faults and memory leaks, uh, which are better monitored or handled in newer languages. So for that reason, I can't put C in S tier, but uh, I think it's worthy of an A tier ranking. Next up, we have Swift. Uh, I'm going to also put this in the A column, or I guess the A row. This is the language used to develop iOS apps. Uh, it's developed and managed by Apple, so you know it's not going anywhere anytime soon. iOS app development used to be done in Objective-C, which is a notoriously bad and confusing language. Remember when I talked about natural selection? Yeah, Objective-C is one of those languages that has been quickly dying out. I haven't used Swift a whole lot, but it's fairly easy to pick up. Of course, everyone's definition of easy is gonna be different, but there's a lot of documentation out there, a lot of resources. My only gripe is that the syntax changes so often from different, you know, from version to version of iOS. So it's a language that requires a lot of maintenance and keeping up with as the language evolves. Next up, we have assembly. So again, to remind you, this is my experience working in the language. It has nothing to do with the technical importance or the historical importance, but working in assembly, um, sucks for lack of a better term unless you're trying to be super efficient and every byte of memory counts probably 99 percent of you guys will never actually work in assembly i do really like assembly for educational purposes and every computer scientist should learn and work with assembly at least just to see what's going on under the hood and how data moves around the cpu registers so for that reason i can't put it in like say an f tier but to work with it uh I'm gonna to have to put it in D. C++, I am also gonna put this in the A tier. It's close to the hardware like C, which makes it blazing fast. Uh, it's often used for stuff like real-time operating systems and game engines where speed is crucial. With newer versions of C++, they've really tried to make the language easier to work with from a syntax point of view. It's my first language, so it, it holds a special place in my heart. My issue with C++ is that it's basically C with a bunch of stuff added onto it. 
like classes and objects. So in my opinion, it, it always felt like the syntax has kind of been awkward because it wasn't built as the language was built. It was built on top of the language. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of all the weird syntax and symbols in C++. So that's why I can't put it in S tier, but definitely worthy of A. Prologue, this is another older language. I actually wonder if this is older than C. Let me look this up. I just looked it up and they were actually both released in 1972, which makes them C and Prologue 50 years old. So it's pretty cool that we're making this video on the, like a 50 year anniversary. Prologue is a logic based language. It's way different than any other language on this list. And it's used a lot for like AI and ling linguistics. I had to use it in one of my grad school courses and I, I don't know, it just didn't click with me. The fact that it wasn't a traditional language and it, it was just hard for me to wrap my head around it. Granted, this was like six years ago. I don't know how my experience with it now would be, but I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna give it a D. All right, JavaScript, the most popular language in the world, created in a little over a week. I feel like no matter how many times I've worked with JavaScript, I always learn something new and, and weird about the language. It seems like every time I work in it, I always get stuck on something that ends up being like really simple, but I just find the language to be super unintuitive. So I'm going to give it a C. Next up, we have TypeScript. It's basically JavaScript with syntactic sugar on it. It's solely made for developers because once it runs, it gets transpiled down to JavaScript anyways. It's basically JavaScript with more policing on top of it. Like it's a more strict language. It helps developers avoid some of the common pitfalls of vanilla JavaScript. So it's a really good language because of that aspect. I think most TypeScript developers will tell you there's really no point in using JavaScript over TypeScript. So I'm gonna give it a B. Next up, we have SQL. This is something that I use pretty much every day. It's the language used to interact with any type of relational database. Personally, SQL syntax has always been unintuitive for me, even though I do use it so often. I'm by no means a SQL wizard. For most SQL operations, it is pretty straightforward, as, you know, as long as you're doing basic CRUD operations, even like simple joins. But SQL can get pretty crazy. Once you get into just like super long stored procedures or dynamic SQL, it's easy to get lost. And it's not like a traditional programming language where you read it from top to bottom. It's SQL is kind of like an onion where you have to read it from like the inside out. So I'm I'm kind of stuck between a B and a C, but let's go with a B. Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I'll change it down the line. Next up, we have PHP. Oh man, I feel like PHP gets a lot of hate in the coding community, probably more than it deserves, but it definitely has its strengths. In its prime, it was a good language. It allowed you to spin something up like a web server really quickly has all the features that you need in a language. I know a lot of you would expect me to put this in the F column, but I'm going to give it a C. All right, next up we have C Sharp. As a .NET developer, I've worked in C Sharp for many years and I've really come to love the language. Coming from a Java background, I was able to pick it up super quickly. It has great support from Microsoft to keep the language really competitive with all the other top languages. One of the most popular game engines, Unity, uses C Sharp, so it's not solely for .NET. I really can't say too many bad things about C Sharp, so I'm, I'm gonna put it in the S tier. All right, next up we have Ruby. This was a language that was, was really popular like five to 10 years ago, but it's really fallen off and it's kind of become sort of a niche language. There's nothing you can really do in this language that you can't do in something like Python, which is better a better language in almost every aspect, performance, uh, syntax, and support for the language. So I'm gonna give Ruby a D. All right, finally we have anything that runs in a shell. So this would be things like Bash or PowerShell. Bash is used for Unix operating systems, whereas PowerShell is used for Windows. This for me goes straight into the S tier. Just the fact that you can pull up a terminal, start executing commands and interact, interacting with the operating system, I, I don't see any, anywhere else it could go. I personally love using the terminal. I know, especially if you guys are new to it, it's, it's a little intimidating. I tried to avoid it like the first year I got into coding. But once you get comfortable with the command line, uh, I mean, you appreciate how simple but powerful it is. You can also create shell scripts, which which is basically just a program consisting of shell commands to complete some task or operation. All right, guys, let me know in the comments which ones you agree with, which ones you disagree with. Again, these are just my personal experiences with the language. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. This was mostly just for fun. I do have another video talking about what the best programming languages are if you want to check that out next. 
Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.